You just finished reading chapter 15, so now I want to go over some of the content of that chapter and help you apply it to writing response one. So the first thing I want to talk about comes actually at the end of chapter 15, and that is the writing environment. A lot of times this is something we overlook, but it can be a really important part of setting yourself up for success in writing, okay? So here's some things to consider about your environment. One, do you like to be with other people or um, kind of alone? Do you need some background noise to help you think, like coffee shop ambient? ambiance or maybe some of you know like the wash in the washing machine or do you need absolute quiet and then think about this too when do you get your best ideas early in the morning or late at night if you're a night owl it doesn't make sense to try to do your writing in the morning when you're struggling to stay awake um, and even just kind of think coherently so play to your strengths with this and then one other thing to consider too is um, do you need to look at any inspirational mem mementos like photos or anything or do you like bare surroundings? So when I was in college what I liked to do was I liked to go into the stacks of the library. For whatever reason looking at the titles of all the books seemed to somehow um, make me feel like a writer and would help me with that rather than just staring at a blank white wall. So consider these things um, as you are preparing to sit down and write your response essay one. And what I want you to do um, is go into the worksheet and I've given you some questions to get you thinking about what will help you generate ideas for response essay one and what will help you with your environment to set you up for success. Okay, so go ahead, pause this video and complete these questions in the worksheet and then come back and I'll help you with generating ideas. All right, so for response one, go ahead and take one or two of the methods mentioned in chapter 15. So maybe brainstorming and imaging um, or mapping and the reporter's questions, whichever ones you want to do or focus on one method and use that to help you come up with what you want to say about Ree's essay, Returning to My Father's uh, Koreatown, okay? And if you need a little more guidance, consider these questions. What idea or description stood out to you the most in Ree's essay and why? Um, or what did you find relatable or not relatable at, about Ree's experience, okay? So those can be um, some questions to get you started um, in your idea generation. Pause this video, take 10 to 15 minutes to come up with some ideas, and then come back. All right, now that you have your ideas, you've really kind of done uh, one of the three key stages for the prep work of your paper. And we'll talk more about these later, but basically it's always good to consider your purpose, your audience, and your source before you start drafting. Um, right now, you really just did purpose. You kind of came up with your topic and what it is you want to say. And if you're still a little uncertain about what you want to say about Ree's essay, maybe just take a little time and think about this. What uh, stood out to you about how the essay that you think is important to note? Now, once you have what you want to say, kind of think about your audience. Who do you want to say this to? A lot of times students assume that all the writing they do in college is for the teacher, but that's actually not the case and not who you're really supposed to be um, gearing your writing for. You really should be gearing your writing toward uh, a classmate, okay? So you're not gearing it toward the expert who you're saying, oh, I can't say anything new that my teacher hasn't already heard of, you know, how am I going to impress them? That kind of just locks you up and that's not how your teachers are really thinking about your papers. Instead, think of writing for a classmate, someone who already has some interest or knowledge about what you're saying, but would like to know more, okay? So consider what would your classmates want to know about what you have to say about Ree's essay, okay? And most importantly, what do you want them to learn? This is the most important question that every writer should address in their mind before they sit out to write their paper, okay? Then lastly, for source, for response essay one, your source is uh, the article returning to my father's Koreatown. So what parts of that article, what descriptions does Ree use, uh, how will that help you when writing your paper? What parts can you pull on to quote um, and use to support what you have to say? Okay, so what I would do is pause this video, kind of complete these questions um, in the worksheet for yourself, and then come back and I'll walk you through the planning and drafting stage. All right, so we just completed idea, and really that last question there, how do you pick up what, um, here should say uh, sources, the, the sections of the article that are gonna help you with your idea. 
And now we're kind of working on plan and draft um, together. So for plan, your essay always is gonna have three parts, an introduction, a body paragraph, and a conclusion. So in the introduction, um, you need to give the author and the title of the article and a, a brief statement of what the article, uh, my uh, returning to my father's Korea town, what the article's about. And then after you do that, jump in and state what your purpose is in this paper. What do you want your reader to learn or think about Rhee's article once they've finished reading your paper? So then in the body of your paper, you then explain why you believe that aspect or that idea from Rhee's essay is important. And this is where you can pull on the essay and give, you know, the examples of Rhee's descriptions and quoter and do your uh, things like that. And then in the conclusion, you're kind of just restating what you said in the introduction, but you're just focusing again on saying why what you have to say about Rhee's article is important, okay? So that's a basic outline. And if you need a little more help, it does help to go look to that checklist um, called Know Your Writing Situation in Chapter 1, okay? So really, uh, that's kind of the end of the writing process. That's as far as we're going to go for this week. We'll cover more of revision um, later on, and we'll dive into drafting um, these types of paragraphs a little more in upcoming weeks. But right now, this is a good starting place for you in this class. All right, so if you have any questions with response one, go ahead and email me or send me a text. Um, I'm happy to answer your questions um, and I can uh, troubleshoot with you any problems that you have in the writing process up to this point. So once you've actually drafted your essay and completed the writing process, you're gonna upload it onto MU Learn. Okay, you'll go under week one and you'll uh, submit it right here where it says repeating response essay one. Um, and you just go through and hit the uh, submit button, upload your assignment, and hit submit again. Sometimes students forget this and then their submission does not go through. Make sure you hit the bottom, the button kind of at the bottom. And again, you'll do that for this week one online class session worksheet. You'll submit it right here following the exact same steps. Okay, if there are any other questions, you know how to get in touch with me. My contact information is in the worksheet and on MU Learn. And I look forward to reading what you guys have to say in your uh, reading response essays.